it is Jessiana Seville from thekidneyrd.com. We're a group of registered dietitians that focus only on kidneys and only on kidney health. And I pop in here pretty much Monday through Thursday to help uh, dispel myths. So today I want to talk about sodium, which is one of the biggest opportunities for you to preserve your kidney health. But there are some big myths and some big things that get people into trouble with sodium that they may think they're doing great and they're doing all the right things. But these are things that we see trip up our clients. So five things. I'm going to check over here my notes, make sure I don't forget any. Okay, number one, this is the biggest one I see is that people think that no sodium is better than low sodium, that if they eat as little sodium as possible, that they will be healthy. And I've mentioned throughout this week of the last couple of lives that no sodium is not necessarily the best way to go. You still need to have some. We aim for around 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams today uh, per day of sodium. There's been a few case reviews in the medical literature of people that have had a very, very, very low sodium, like less than 500 milligrams of sodium, how they've had problems with their potassium. So we focus on enough sodium, the right amount of sodium, not no sodium. No sodium is not right. Um, okay, myth number two. If I don't salt my food, then I am following a low sodium diet. That is also a myth. Um, most of us get most of our sodium from eating out, packaged foods like crackers, cookies, chips, hamburger helper, processed foods, that's really where we get 75% of our sodium intake. So salting your food some, just because you take table salt off the table doesn't mean you're following a low sodium diet. Looking at sodium wherever you're getting at, whatever you're putting in your mouth, knowing if it has sodium or not, is really how you're going to achieve that lower sodium diet. One of the easiest strategies, a can-do strategy rather than a don't-do strategy, is to focus on whole foods, plant-focused, especially fruits and vegetables. Really, really powerful for a lot of reasons. Okay, myth number three. This one also trips people up all the time. A really easy one for people to get mixed up on. People will say, well, when I go out to eat, I always tell my waiter to tell the chef to not salt my food. So when I go out to eat, I'm really getting a pretty low sodium dish and it should be okay. We all know that restaurant food is salty, but just telling the chef to not salt the food does not make that dish lower sodium. In the cooking process for most people and for most restaurants, salt really is added at many different stages. Even the food that they start with can be frozen or packaged and then they cook it up, add their special sauces, etc. But that packaged food can be quite salty, but even from the time that they marinate it, there may be salt in it, but let's say you had a marinated dish or I don't know, whatever. Um, let's say you had a marinated piece of chicken, but they marinate it, there's salt there. Then they put it on the grill, they salt it, then they take it off the grill, then they salt it. <laughs> Before they send it out to the table, they salt it one more time. So there can be a lot, a lot, a lot of salt. And so just telling the waiter to not salt your food is better than nothing, but it's not going to make that food low sodium. So a great strategy for a lot of people is to make sure that you have, um, that if you don't have a fluid restriction to drink plenty of fluid, if you're knowing to go, if you know you're going out to eat, that dilutionary effect can make a big, big difference on a high sodium meal. Um, and otherwise you wanna pick, again, fresh options. Salads can be really good because you can put the dressing on the side, which is where most of the salt comes from. Um, steamed vegetables, and that's, you know, again, be like, hey, like, please don't salt this if you can. Remember to do that, it'd be fantastic. And otherwise, just realize that eating out is still a high sodium meal, even if you tell them not to salt it. Um, and so you'd want to plan accordingly. Okay, myth number three. Number four, another big myth, is that sea salt is lower in sodium than table salt, like iodized salt. And so if I use sea salt, that that's a better alternative for my low sodium diet. Uh, that is also a big myth. They both have the same amount of sodium. Um, sea salt does have a different mineral content and for the very refined palate and cook, it has a different taste when you cook with it, but they really have the same amount of sodium. So you're not getting a ton of extra benefit as far as quantity of sodium from just switching to sea salt. I like the extra minerals in sea salt, 
but it really can be six is either way which one you use. A lot of our patients or clients will have them use kelp seasoning. You can look it up, K-E-L-P, kelp seasoning. It's around 100 milligrams of sodium for a teaspoon, still in like a salt shaker. It's got extra boost of magnesium, iron, and a good dose of iodine, but naturally occurring iodine, which we really love. And my clients think that that's such a game changer to, to quote unquote salt their food before they put it on the table or take it with them. So that's one that we like. All right, myth number five, I should never salt when I cook. People think I'm on a low sodium diet. Salt is out of the house. It's gone. I'm never going to salt when I cook. And I think that that is sad. <laughs> For the home cook, you need some salt and you need some salt with the right foods. For example, beans, no sodium beans, beans cooked from scratch with no salt in them. Honestly, I think they taste like paste and most of my clients do too. They just are not palatable so using a little bit of salt when you're cooking something like beans can be helpful homemade bread's another one if you have no salt bread for some people it can really just taste like eating flour which can be gross also <laughs> so there's some foods where that little bit of salt can be really a good addition and make your food really come alive of course we love using seasonings like garlic powder and onion powder and uh, vinegars and lemons and limes and uh, spicy foods, you know, like uh, chili sauce or a um, hot pepper sauce or jalapenos, all of those different flavor profiles can really decrease the need for salt without you feeling like you're eating gross bland food. But on occasion, you might use a little bit of table salt when you are cooking uh, to make it more palatable. Um, so that is something that we plan out with our clients at the Kinyardis. How much can they use and when would they use salt in their cooking to really make the dishes awesome? Because it's one thing to eat for health and it's another thing to eat for pleasure. And you really need both in your life. And just because you're eating to preserve your kidney function doesn't mean you have to eat gross foods. So as a recap, five big myths, they trip up our clients all the time um, to clarify for you. One, no sodium is as good as low sodium. Not true. Low sodium is fine. You don't have to have none. Number two, if I don't salt my food, then I'm full on a low sodium diet. Also not true. Most of us get salt from our packaged foods at restaurants. Number three, if you don't have the restaurant salt their food, if you tell the waiter not to salt it, it's now a low sodium dish. Also false. Uh, that's not a low sodium dish. Number four, sea salt is way better than table salt. Uh, it's low sodium rather than table salt, same amount of sodium, different mineral content. And then number five, I should never salt ever when I cook. And I think there are some exceptions to that rule where you can add some salt in, and especially if you're not eating it out a lot, cooking from scratch, you have a lot more room. Anyways, that is all for now. Um, we're really excited about some things we have at thekidneyrd.com. Um, in the next week, we'll be bringing up a Facebook group called uh, Kidney Kitchen, where you can learn ways that you can cook, make your food super fantastic, um, and kind of be able to utilize some of the great resources we have for our clients. You can check us out at kidneyrd.com, schedule a free discovery call with myself, where we can talk through a strategy of what you'd want to do to really work on your kidney function, kind of a high level strategy. And if not, get in with one of our practitioners for a one-to-one -one session. Anyways, that's all. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate always the support and I love having people here and those that can share uh, and really get some of these myths gone. We appreciate that as well. All right. Bye-bye.